This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Jackie Correa. Let's get right into your top local stories. An Escondido family still reeling after a frightening wake up call from a man who broke into their home with a machete. This happened early yesterday morning around one o'clock while everyone was still asleep. The family says the suspect broke through the garage, breaking the hinges on a door and eventually climbing through a window to get inside the home. He then threatened the lives of five people, including an infant under the age of one. He told me if I call 911, he will murder me and my family. I felt really afraid, afraid for my life, uh, afraid for my family's life, um, and I felt, I felt powerless. Officers responding arrived to find some of the family members running from the home, shouting for help. Two others were struggling with the suspect after one of them managed to stab him in the neck. Police identified the suspect as 29 year old Jesse Angel Martinez, a high risk sex offender out on parole and wearing an ankle monitor. He was taken into custody and faces several charges, including attempted murder and assault with a deadly weapon. Some family members were hurt in the struggle, but they are all experienced expected to be okay. Today, Mayor Todd Gloria is announcing his new $5.6 billion budget proposal for fiscal year 2025. It comes as the city is facing a projected $137 million shortfall. He says it is a spending plan that delivers on key priorities, including road repair, stormwater maintenance, public safety and homelessness, which is one of the biggest issues facing San Diego, getting homeless individuals off the streets. Well, the city continues to face criticism over the January 22nd flooding and what neighbors say was years of neglected storm drains. The budget will quadruple annual funding for emergency flood prevention from 20 million to $80 million. Meanwhile, the mayor's proposal avoids deep cuts and layoffs with one time moves and borrowing. Still on the chopping block, free city Wi Fi, help for immigrants, and other low profile programs. The budget proposal now goes to the city council for approval. It'll be finalized in June. This weekend, dozens of local leaders are going back to Washington, D.C. to continue lobbying for more funding on the sewage crisis at our southern border. This morning, Imperial Beach Mayor Paloma Aguirre is one of those leaders heading to the nation's capital to meet with members of the White House to ask them once again to declare a state of emergency on the toxic sewage crisis. Aguirre tells us she hopes to bring attention to a part of the entire solution no one is talking about, which is the diversion of the Tijuana River and how that alone is the primary source of pollution in the region. So the funding that's been secured is to expand and rehabilitate the International Wastewater Treatment Plant. But the Tijuana River di diversion is what's most important. And we have not had an environmental review of that phase of the project. We have not had funding allocated for it. Obviously, no bids have been put out for any project. So all of those processes need to be streamlined. And the only way to do that is through an emergency declaration. NBC7 has been covering this crisis for years, diving into the problems and solutions. You can find out more by searching Toxic Tide on our website at NBC7.com. And heads up, if you plan on driving through the Lemon Grove area this weekend, the southbound State Route 125 will be closed. Starting tonight at 9, crews will work to replace slabs of concrete. So if you're south of SR 94, you will be detoured to Hamishaw Road. But if you are north, you'll be rerouted to SR 94 to avoid the shutdown. Caltrans crews are expected to wrap this all up Monday morning. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen joins us now with a look at your forecast. Hey Jackie, as we head through the afternoon today, you're going to notice cooler changes. We're not getting very warm this afternoon. We'll be around 70 for the inland valleys, a little more sunshine than what the coastal see. The coast will have some clouds hanging around mid 60s for a high. Mountains and deserts will be sunny, but a little cooler than yesterday. We have rain on the way for part of the weekend, but not the entire weekend. So let's look at future weather. We start Saturday dry. The first half of the day will be dry later in the afternoon. Saturday we will have a chance for showers. It'll be cool with a breezy onshore wind and then a slight chance for Sunday afternoon. Your 10 day forecast coming up. All right, Sheena, thanks. A local woman is trying to get the word out after she lost her dog to a disease she never even heard of and how it can spread to people too. And we sat down with National City's new police chief, how he plans to tackle some of the biggest challenges facing the city that is coming up. Did you 
know NBC7 is helping you stay up to date on your local news. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Catherine Garcia. And I'm Mark Bono. And catch up on your favorites. Hey, there we go. All on Peacock. Watch award-winning movies. This is your moment. And the trendiest shows. Did you miss me? Welcome to the Kelly Clarkson Show. Whether you're on the go or on one at home. Pretty afternoon. We're going to be cooler than yesterday. Sign up now to stream on Peacock. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Jackie Crea. Welcome back. Police are still looking for a man they say tried to lure children into his car by impersonating a police officer. Now, the terrifying incident happened just over a month ago in the Skyline neighborhood, and this is a sketch of the man authorities say tried to lure a nine year old, nine and 12 year old child into his car at Kyler Park on Woodrow Avenue. Now authorities say the suspect told the children he was a police officer in an attempt to lure them into his car to take them photos of them. Police say the children were suspicious of his behavior and did not follow him. Instead, they told an adult who then called 911. Could not even imagine what, how those parents must have felt when they their kids came up, told them about what what happened. If you know anything about the incident or the man in the sketch looks familiar, give police a call. National City's new police chief is sharing his main priorities. Chief Alejandro Hernandez sat down with NBC7 and Telemundo 20. He grew up in National City and says he wants the department to be a part of the community. Hernandez says staying in an office or behind a desk won't find the solutions to the city's problems. More than 60% of the people living in National City are Hispanic, and he says his goal is to build trust with transparency and technology. With the Citizen Connect application on the phone is going to allow our community members or anybody that wants to look at it for that matter is to see the calls that are happening as they're occurring in the community. So this allows the community to be more engaged. You can see more of our interview with the chief on our website at NBC7.com. One local pet owner is sharing her heartbreaking story as a warning about an uptick in cases of a bacterial infection called leptospirosis. Lepto spreads through urine from rats or contaminated water, puddles that your dog steps in and then licks its paws. It could be passed on to other animals and even people. The vets recommend getting your dogs vaccinated against lepto. People who are exposed to the disease should also seek medical care right away. We're all animal lovers. We want the best for our, our babies, you know, and I don't want anybody to ever go through what we went through. I just really hope that people will listen to this and understand, call your vet, get your vaccination as soon as you can and talk to them more about it. If your dog's feeling lethargic, not himself for a couple days, do take the test, it's worth it. And vets recommend getting your dogs vaccinated against lepto. People who are exposed to the disease should also seek medical care right away. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen will have a look at your weekend weather right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 are teaming up to make a positive impact in our community with Local Impact Grants, a grant challenge powered by Comcast NBC Universal. Local Impact Grants awards unrestricted funding to local nonprofit organizations making a difference by tackling everyday problems. Learn more about the program and submit your entry at NBC7.com slash Local Impact Grants. Applications must be received by April 19th. Hi there, I'm NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. For today at the coast, it's going to be cooler. Everybody's going to be cooler, but the clouds will hang around near the coast. Inland valleys, mostly sunny near 70. Inland mountains and deserts, a little breezy. Tomorrow, we have afternoon shower chances. Breezy and cool, a slight chance Sunday afternoon. So this is not going to be an all-day rain. Mountains will mostly see rain with a snow chance only at the highest elevations. A cooler weekend, a little breezy this weekend. Next week will be dry and a little bit warmer, and the deserts this weekend will be pretty windy. And again, mostly rain in the mountains. So the Padres are in L.A. this weekend, but Ke Peco Park won't be empty. Billy Joel and Sting are coming together for a big show tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. It's going to be busy downtown, so to help you get around, uh, MTS is boosting service. The trolley will run a little later than usual, up to between 11.30 p.m. at midnight. Depending on which line you're taking, you can find more details on MTS's website. And more coverage you can count on at NBC7.com. Thank you for watching.